Well, hi, good morning. Thank you so much for joining me in my shop here. It's, what is it? It's February 20th today. Weather here is just totally normal for this time of year now. A little bit below zero, nothing special going on. So, what to do with this radio now? I think the next step is to try to put this back in its cabinet and take a look at the uh, pointer uh, with regards to the numbers that are written on the glass. The thing about that cabinet is it's a great big cabinet and inside it is an old record player. Now I don't have any intentions of fixing the record player, but I would be remiss if I didn't spend a little bit of time looking at it anyway. And uh, just maybe Maybe we can make it work to some degree, but but I, I doubt that very much. But let's have a look at it. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to do that either. The whole cabinet comes up here. I got to think about how to do this. It's a big one, all right. <coughs> so what we're going to be looking at is what's inside here. That's an oldie, for sure. This is a pretty old player. Hmm. cartridge there, but I don't feel the needle. Oh, you know what? The needle seems to be pointing like this. It should be pointing down. It feels like it's pointing like this. So I think it's probably been bent. And these things are pretty darn, darn rugged. So we can guess it's still there. Filco is on off. And the reject, reject button. Feels okay. It's just a, a ton of dust here. There's a, some kind of spider nest right there. Um, and over here, it's got a switch from automatic to manual. There we go. Look at that. Automatic. Just like that. Big mechanical action there. And then look at this. Can't say I've ever seen a spindle of that sort. Coming up and bent, very very small here, make it easy to get onto the record hole, I guess, is th they're thinking. I've never seen one pointed like this. And I guess you let the record drop, and as it comes down, it, it'll get get held by this guy, which, which probably, you know, at the right time, has a way of rotating out of the way somehow. So the bottom record, you have a stack of maybe eight records on here. The, oh, oh. Oh my gosh, look at this. You look at how small this is. <laughs> I just realized. <laughs> a little tiny thing here. That's unusual too. Because usually these things are close to the size of the record. And this is a one speed only. I only plays 78 records, which I mean, mostly 10 inch records. It'd be out something like that. Yeah, got to come out to this. And these things. I'm not exactly sure what these are. These could be. Uh, they're both, they both look identical. They look like mirror images actually of each other. That's odd. Well that's a bit of a mystery as to what those things are. Conjunction with this, uh, you set them to catch the edge of the record here, or maybe put a bigger record on. You use it like that. Maybe you do this one. They are actually, if you notice, they're they're, they're on a 
like a lineup with with this part. So you can see how the record would maybe maybe sit like this. I don't know. <laughs> Pretty cool. Well, that was fun right there. What to do next with it? Next thing is to drink a little coffee and think about putting some power on it. See what happens. Okay, so I've turned it around. We're looking in the back. You can see the camera here looking inside. Let's look through that camera. Okay, so uh, audio cable hanging down here. The speaker with its plug and wires. So the, these wires here. These got to be the power wires. You can see somebody previously did what I did, and they just did it somewhere else. They cut them and taped them back. And this is a well. I, I don't think it's friction tape. I think it's a electrical tape. Kind of dates it a little bit. What happens if we put power on these wires? How do we know for sure? Let me just put a little more light in here. That's quite a bit more. Oops. Second here. Ah, there. There we go. Okay, sorry about the Venetian blinds that are running now. Um, if we look at where the wires go up to the top there. There we are. So looks like they just go over to the switch and up to the motor and nothing else and that would be expected and what about this motor turns just fine okay well I think we can put some power on here uh, we just have to do it a little bit carefully um, in case there is some kind of short circuit or something going on in there Now what do I expect to have happen? Well, you know what? I, I'll bet you it turns around. I'll bet you the motor runs. That's my bet. I'm not putting any money down on it this time around. And I'm looking for my cheater cord. Where's my... Where's that cheater cord? That's the cord I used to uh, plug things in. I think this might be it. Here it is. So uh, when I'm going to power this up, I'll be putting the power through a couple light bulbs using the dim bulb technique, dim bulb approach. It's not terribly good. Now I've got this thing turned around where we can't really see inside it. Okay, let me spin it around again. beast all right now let me just make sure that this is okay. okay as long as we don't move it those wires will be fine start off yeah start off with this off off goes that way that's a little odd okay now, if I just raise the camera a little bit, you'll be able to see the uh, the dim bulbs of these two light bulbs here. And they're both in. Nothing should happen at all when I do this. Nothing has happened at all. So the whole supply is showing up, 116 volts, which means the switch is open. I'm going to cut the power. I'm going to flip the switch on. This shouldn't be turning. Well, let's see what happens. Here we go. It feels like it's locked. 
for spinning away in there. It seems like it wants to wants to go nowhere. Okay, power off. And power off. Maybe we can lift this right out. Oh my god. Oh! Phone call time. Okay, back to this now. So I was lifting this up and it seemed to be coming. Take a look underneath there and see what's what's happening. What's happening under there? Okay, you can see a wheel, and that's probably hard like a rock a gear there. Now, I'm just a little curious about. Come on, camera. Uh, why why does the center post turn? Is it, is it threaded in there and it's just loose on its threads? I need more light. Bring in the blaster. So I'm trying to see here. There. Is, are there threads at the bottom of the... Uh, Oops. So there's an up and down thing happening here too. I can't imagine this part on the, the shaft is supposed to spin there. Because that that, that would <laughs> that would look pretty weird up here with records going around. Like that? That can't be the case. What's the gear there for? The gear must be engaging with something down underneath here. Oh yeah. So that that's how so what's happening is the rubber tire in the back there. Where'd it go? Where'd the rubber tire go? It's hard to see, but it's right there in the in the camera view. Uh that's turning the platter and then the platter is then geared onto this wheel and this wheel is turning all the works. stuck but it's hard to tell you know well we take an awful lot to turn that turn that so if I go down and get this to go down I can get this to go down that is down that's this that's stuck now So it must be a clip that's holding this together, holding this is probably a, you know, a clip of this sort here. Probably down on the shaft, down under. Okay, so, so now what's happened is the teeth on the platter have engaged with that gear. And I can now really feel, uh, so the mechanism really needs a lot of oiling, that's, that's for sure. I mean, I'm, I'm moving it. This might pop up at some point. Okay, uh, to go further with this, um, and, and maybe it's worth it, it would be to, to lift it out of here. Uh, lifting it out of here, these things are usually locked in in some way so they won't fall out during transportation or if somebody turns them sideways. What happens here? This probably weighs a ton. Oh wow, I don't think it's on. Also, they're usually on springs. I don't think this guy qualifies. It's a gap here. Wow. That's a toughie. So look what we're gonna do. We need to think seriously about how far to go with this. It's never gonna play a record. Why would I say that? Okay. Decision time, I gotta go drink some coffee and think about what to do with this. Okay, so, something else came to mind and that is the needle. 
which I think from my feeling it felt like it was bent forward. Let's see if we can look at the needle and see what uh, what we got here. A little hard to see, isn't it? Oh, oh yeah, it's been bent forward all right. Um, that probably should come out just about straight. Uh, it's probably been bent from this being jammed down uh, onto the platter or uh, deck here or something. And the uh, cartridge, you know, the chance of that cartridge operating is so low. This is, I believe this is a style that's got basically, uh, well, some kind of salt crystal in it and uh, they just, they don't last. I don't know if we can, can, can we get a read on what it says there? Static corp. So this is a replacement. Oops. I think it's a replacement. Oh, it won't, just won't. It's not going to want to. Well, that's all. That's enough. I've seen enough. Seen enough. We'll have to see more. Uh. Okay, yeah, I'm going to go think about things while I drink some coffee here. Okay, after consulting my coffee cup, the decision is we're done with this. There's no use me pursuing this in any way, shape, or form. So we're going to, we're going to leave it and concentrate on the radio. Now the radio has got to go back in here. It's a hassle to get it in here. As you can imagine, it's got to come up and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to put it in and hope to heck the pointer is accurate enough on the dial that that uh, that is good. Now I have to think about taking this glass completely out to clean it. And you can see that this radio, like all good old radios, has paint speckles on it. Can you see there's paint speckles and there's paint speckles all over the glass too. So that's kind of a, a rule I've got. If a radio is really old and there's no paint speckles on it, then you got a question. What happened? <laughs> now, that's what I got to do. So, to figure out the glass, I got to kind of flip this thing. I got to flip this thing right over and have it sit on its top. Could, could, could do that. Okay, let, let me get set up here. So now that I have the radio tipped up like this, it's easy for me to see how the glass is being held in. And it's very simple. All I have to do is loosen off a, a few screws, a couple metal bands, and that glass will come right out and I can clean it properly. Because that's a big part of having these radios look nice, is having a really nicely cleaned glass. So that's what I'm going to do. Out it'll come. Okay, I've got the glass out. The, uh, this trap sits on top of foam here, and the foam the foam has... Oh, this is a rubber band. It's a rubber band going around it. That's what this is. It's going to break here. Well, that would be easy to find some another rubber band to put it on there, so I'm going to take this off. Still has a bit of rubberiness to it. That's impressive. Usually these, the, they usually put foam in here, and the foam collapses, if you like. And uh, I can't get the rest of it off later. Look at the dirt buildup. I mean, this was a heavily used player. It's just got. Like, it's pretty egregious. Yeah. This is the front side, and there's, I'm checking for print. You wouldn't expect there to be print on the front, and there usually isn't. But sometimes there is. There's nothing on the front here. Now, if we look at this too, is there any sign of degradation already occurring here? Is there anything that... Uh, a black background. That's going to help any. So I'm looking down here in the outside area, any sign of the uh, paint coming off anywhere. The 
there's so much dirt it's hard to see but I don't see any evidence that the paint is coming off so I'm trying to assess how adherent the paint is on here now I'm looking at it this way it looks very good uh, there is a look to these when the paint is good because you can tell there's a thickness of paint on the glass so I don't have to look here and see no degradation at all anywhere on it nothing the red colors, sometimes the different colors do different things. So now I'm looking down these red dots and the, this kind of a, a lighter pinkish colored stuff. Nothing. There's nothing here that is damaged. That probably means I can wash this side lightly, mostly to remove dust, because of course this has been sitting this way and the dust has been falling onto it and then collecting at the bottom here. Collecting at the bottom, collecting at the top too collecting at the bottom mostly but the back side shouldn't pick up too much dirt because it's sitting like this it's not even sitting you know vertically it's sitting so it shouldn't do too much rubbing on the back the reason I'm dwelling on this is because this is how you can ruin one of these radios and I've done it once unfortunately I caught myself before I did too much damage but uh, I didn't really assess the thing properly uh, carefully enough and then, you know, I, I did the wiping thing. Any damage? No. Wipe. Any damage? No. Wipe. Any damage? Yeah. <laughs> That's what happened. I don't want that to happen again. So, uh, because, you know, you damage this, you really, this is a big part of the radio. The look of the radio. So how am I going to do this? I don't want to soak this in water. That, that would be a mistake. Concentrate on the top side first, of course, where most of the dirt is, without getting the bottom side wet or trying to minimize that. I think I use, probably use a razor blade and kind of, well, I'll have to use a razor blade here to get this rubber off. The other thing is, drop this and break it. That's a sad moment, too. I don't want that to happen. Good. Okay, so I'm going to uh, attend to that. Next time you see it, it should be looking like new. Okay, it's no small thing cleaning one of these. It takes it takes a while, and I'm going to show you my major cleaning stuff because look what it came out like. I mean it just looks looks fantastic. Sure started a mess. The main reason I got this this clean the razor blade. Razor blade on the glass side never on the number side of course. And I use I use this product. I'm not promoting this in any way but Lens Cleaner Restorer. Not promoting this product but products like this. Things that are uh, designed for cleaning cars can be very useful in cleaning uh, radios. So this stuff is ammonia based. You, know, you, you put it on then you polish it off and I find this really e even, even after I've cleaned glass as best I can with glass cleaner and other things after using this it just looks even better. So this stuff's great. That's how we do it. That and paper towel and a lot of care and a lot of examination looking at it very carefully so there we are I'm gonna put it down before I drop it and then and then the story goes south we'll put that back in the radio put the radio put that back in the cabinet put the radio back in the cabinet and see what we get oh you know what I got another option here now that this is out I can put this in front of the radio the radio chassis hmm hmm Okay, let's see if there's any hope of doing this. Oh, sideways, right. Sideways. So the low numbers uh, <laughs> Oh my gosh, all that work to get the uh, low the low end down here on the pointer. Did I get this right on the radio? Go like that. Goes like that. I did. Okay, good. <laughs> I just had this palpitation that, uh, in fact, I'd managed to get this, you know, the wrong way. So now, putting this glass here. So there's a measurement from here to the registration lines. Registration points. I close this up this pointer 
should be I should be able to do this like line up the pointer with the dots the dots here and then get that measurement wait a minute that doesn't quite make sense and the measurements from here to here it's not to this so really what I have to do if I want to mess around with this and the radio here on my bench is get this fixed somehow like this line it up on the dots with the expectation when I put the radio back in I will again be able to line this right up on the dots gives me a chance to experiment with the lights here a little bit which I kind of see how they've done them now the question is how do you support this thing sitting out here in some kind of rigorous way it would have to be attached to the chassis or else if I move the chassis it'll all move relative how, how would you ever do that build a radio build a cabinet <laughs> uh, that's a tough one how, how would you ever hold this here well I could I could always Oh, you know, once the pointer's moved off here, I don't have it to register onto here anymore. But I can find another registration point, whatever it might be. For instance, this edge here. So, so this edge is lining up pretty much with the glass, but not this edge. Now you'd think if they built the radio perfectly, then the glass would be perfectly balanced on or centered on this plat back plate and that would that would put the pointer over well first step is if it does line up does the thing tune accurately up and down the band and I, I, I can probably just bring it up each time I'd have to bring it up to get my hands right here I'd have to hold it I register it here somehow or on this edge I could use this edge maybe because it's it's just about lining up and then I'd have to tune it like tune it roughly to where it's supposed to go like for instance 21 megahertz so well, I can pick anything I can pick anything while I'm doing this this uh, testing so I'd line this up again like this and then I might move this until it's let's say I'm on the broadcast band oh pointer caught on my finger move this up to like here so I'm, I'm putting it here at 120 or 1200 really is what it is I get that lined up so okay so I think this is tuned to 1200 check it with the uh, signal generator see what we get I think that's that's the best I can do uh, before I kind of want to put this back in the cabinet and then find out oh it needs some kind of adjustment I gotta take it all out again I'd like it to go in once which almost never happens but I'm gonna try okay let's we'll do the uh, dial accuracy check next okay let's start with the uh, broadcast band we're gonna set this to 1500 picking that number out of the air and we're going to dial up 1500 on the radio provided I got this figured out well enough let's do that that's better okay so 1500 right there Okay, this guy's already operating. Let's turn the radio on. Oh, I've got to hook up. I've got to stop for a minute here. Hook up the uh, speaker. Forgot about that. Can't do this without the speaker. Okay, ready now. So the set is on. Volume's low. There we go. Will this thing actually tune in the 1500 signal the way it is? Okay, I'm going to give it the full 
voltage here. Well, doesn't sound like it. How far out is it? So rather than tune the radio, I'm going to tune the signal generator. It's easier to turn it and restore it back. Okay, so it's 1530. 15.30. I'm uh, looking at this. So 15.30, it'd be about a quarter inch up. So it's off by a quarter inch. Now this is the broadcast band. And the broadcast band had two uh, oscillator trimmers for working either end. Radio, what are you doing there? Hmm. I think that's twice now I found this tube to be particularly noisy. Well, I wonder if that means there's a loose connection underneath. It's possible. So what to do about this? I don't know for sure that this is in the right place. And I've only done one band. I should really look at all the bands before making any judgment. If anything, the radio is dialed below 1500, not above. Like if I center the glass, if that's what's really supposed to happen, then it should be 1480 we're tuning in, not 1520. Uh, we should go look at the other end. That's a curious thing there. Lots of curious stuff going on. Hey, it's picking up a station. It's picking up a station, and this is what it has for an antenna. The cable going to my signal generator. That, that seems to bode well, doesn't it? So we'll go right down to the bottom. We'll double check this uh, lineup thing I was talking about. So if we line it up on the marks, then the glass here is actually not completely lined up on. What the heck was that now? Wait a second here. <laughs> Things that happen in my shop that paralyze me. Okay, so that little blurp, that sounds very reminiscent of a kind of interference I get in my shop regularly. Only it doesn't normally go blurp and disappear. It usually comes on with a slow ticking and then runs like a little motor and then slows down and fades out. So is that this radio made that sound? I mean, all I was doing was holding this up here and trying to line it up. Now I'm all scared be scared too. Okay, back to line. I don't know what that noise was. Let's line it up. How can I prove this without putting the radio back in? Now some of these cabinets have uh, screw arrangements so you can shift the chassis a little bit this way and that way when you put it in to further compensate for the situation. Or if I zero the pointer in the wrong place. All done by measurements. Next band. Okay, so this band, I don't want to do this in the middle because I, you know, I could, I, you know what, I could do this in the middle. I could do this in the middle. Go up there. Okay, where are we? If I line this up as best I can, right now, we would be, put it on four. Four megahertz. Four megahertz, eh? Really? Turn this down. Four. Oh, right on. Pretty, pretty darn close. So if I put this to four, and then we tune it in, how far off this mark? Just that far. 
Okay, that one came out pretty good. Next band. Next band. Putting the glass up. Okay, we should go over to seven. I'm gonna do this in the middle again. Okay, checking my glass. Pressure registered. Seven. Seven megahertz. Here we go. Come up. Right on. Right on the money. You can't get any closer than that. It's okay. That's good. Let's do another one. This time, oh, there's, there's no numbers there. There's no numbers near there. 11. It's trying to pick up short wave right now. 11. 11 megahertz. 16, 15, 14, 13, 12. Here we come. A touch high, but if I put this to 11, the signal generator to 11, how, how far do I have to move the pointer to get there? Starting here. Maybe I turn this down too low. I did. Okay, let's set it up again. I'm trying to tune to 11. There's that clicky stuff again. Okay, tuning to 11. Right here. I don't know if you can see it. My arm might be in the way. Okay, we're tuned to 11 megahertz. 11.1. Okay, we'll go back to 11. Okay, so the signal is 11. How far off? Starting from about here. So about that far. Doesn't that sound terrible? Some kind of alt another signal in there with it. So we're we're below 11. But look, look. This is 10. This is 11. So how far below? Just a touch, actually. Just a touch. Not bad. Not, I'm, I'm impressed here. Now we're going to go to the next. Right. Okay, so this is the top band now. 15 megahertz band. All the way from 12 to 22. So we're going to go at 16 here. Okay, 16. Whoops, wrong, wrong control. Now, of course, I'm looking to make sure there's no parallax in the way I'm doing this. Okay. It's picking up stuff. Picking up signals. Even a game with no antenna. Okay. Is this 16? Right? 16. Is this 16? 12, 14, 15. That's 15.5. So th this is what, so unfortunately the images on this high band are going to be terrible. So, 16.4. Uh, now in this case, 16.4 you know, is not far on the dial here. Let's just look again. It's not, it's not too accurate. 16.4. Let's do this. We'll put this back on 16. 16. And then we'll find it on the dial. On the radio, rather. Okay, and now what's it actually saying? So it's saying about 15.6. 15.6, I would make that out to be. Instead of 16. So it's a little off. What can you conclude from this? The lineup was close. Um, I think with, without having a, a, the, the uh, dial faceplate available, it's pretty hard to do these things really accurately. Um, a lot of the oscillator adjustments are on the side here. I think when it's in the cabinet, 
would maybe maybe everything is protruding here. Let me just look at the situation. So that would be this. These have to stick out from the side. So you know what? This these are sticking out the back. You can get at them. And then uh, these other ones. Notice it in. Wait a minute. In and down. Well, you might be able to get at these. Also, might be able to get at all the adjustments when it's back in the uh, case. You know, yeah. Okay, got us. Yeah, what should I do? What should I do here? What should I do here? Uh, I think I'm going to stop for today, and then tomorrow we'll concentrate on putting this back into the uh, cabinet. And uh, I, th I think that's the best thing I can do. Very good. I I'm happy with how this radio's come out. It's it's coming out quite good. Thanks a lot for watching and uh, enjoy your day and uh, I'll be making a video tomorrow.